In this video, I'm gonna explain loudness, luffs metering, and normalization as simply as possible. My name is Josh Jinta, here for the Love Science Music YouTube channel. I'm here at Second Take Sound in New York City. Let's go. So in the music industry, when we speak about loudness, we're talking about how loud are the master recordings that we are releasing into the world through streaming services or through other platforms. And we have a few different ways of measuring how loud music is. The predominant format right now is called the LUFS metering system. LUFS is an average number of how loud a song is in decibels over a period of time. The way you can determine how loud your song is is by putting a metering plugin on your master fader and playing the song through and then look at the plugin and see what the integrated LUFS number is. That's the loudness of your song. There's a free metering plugin that's commonly used, it's called Yulian, I'll link to that below. And another industry standard for measuring loudness is Isotope's Insight plugin or the Waves WLM plugin. So LUFS is the current format of measuring loudness. It's the most modern format to measure accurate loudness. Before LUFS came around, we used to use the RMS metering system. RMS is basically the average loudness in decibels of a song over a period of time. We switched to the LUFS format because the LUFS also tells us average loudness over time, but it also incorporates frequency information because our ears are calibrated to hear mid-range and upper mids at a much higher volume than other frequencies. And the reason for that is because when babies cry or when human voices speak, these are the ranges of frequencies that our, our ears are most tuned to hear the best. If you use a plugin for metering that measures LUFS, you're gonna see what's called the integrated LUFS. That's the average LUFS over time. You're also gonna see the short-term LUFS, which is a LUFS loudness measurement of the last three seconds of time, which is really useful to know how loud your chorus is or your verse. If you wanna release music into the world on Spotify, on Apple Music, then you need to know the loudness that those platforms are requesting masters to be delivered at. So if you go to the Spotify for Artists website, which is the back-end website for artists and music industry folks, you're gonna see on this website that Spotify requests anyone uploading a master to their platform be submitted at negative 14 integrated LUFs. And they also go on to tell you that the listeners who listen to Spotify, the consumers, are gonna be played music at that level, at negative 14 LUFs. So basically Spotify streams music to its consumers at negative 14 LUFs. So therefore, if you submit a master at that level, your master is gonna play back basically how it sounds when you exported it out of your mastering session. YouTube also streams around negative 14 LUFs. Apple Music interestingly streams a little quieter at negative 16 LUFs but pretty much everyone makes one master recording of their song. They don't make multiple versions for the different services. But what's really interesting is that although Spotify says, hey, give us a master at negative 14 LUFs, most people actually don't do that. Most people are submitting masters at negative 14 LUFs at the quietest, and people are submitting masters and songs much louder all the way up to negative five or even negative three LUFs, which is insanely loud. This really depends on your genre of music. For some genres such as EDM or trap, it might be appropriate to have a super loud master of the song. For other more acoustic styles, it probably doesn't make as much musical sense to have a crazy loud master. Spotify also tells us that if we submit a master that's not negative 14, they'll basically adjust it in volume down or up to be at negative 14 to stream for the consumer. If you give them a master at negative five, they're basically gonna turn it down to negative 14 and play it. If you give them a master at negative 19, they're gonna turn it up to negative 14 and play it. This is what's called normalization, and it's a feature that allows the listener to hear music from all different artists and in all different places and listen to it at basically the same level from song to song to song. When you download Spotify for the first time, normalization is automatically set to be on which means any song you listen to is gonna be listened to around negative 14 LUFs. But you can go into your settings and you can turn normalization off. If you do that, you'll be listening to masters at the actual levels that artists and mastering engineers submitted them at. You'll hear some songs at negative five and other songs at negative 18. You'll hear the full range dynamically of the music. The average consumer doesn't even know what normalization is and they'll probably never go into the settings to turn it off. So they're likely listening to the records around negative 14. But artists and mastering engineers have figured out that if you submit a louder record, even though it's turned down to be played at negative 14, it still might be perceived as being fuller and louder due to the amount of compression and limiting that were put on the record to make it sound that way. 
But in my opinion, compression and limiting have to be done really musically because you can make a record sound like crap and make it sound loud, but then you're not doing the record any justice. The real art is making a record sound as loud as possible while still retaining the dynamics and the musicality that were baked into the production and the songwriting. So that's it. Subscribe and hit me with any questions you have in the comments.